few hours ago, I just decided to let go of one of my uh, potential clients. I decided to let that let that potential client go because, well, <clears throat> she doesn't have she doesn't have that kind of money to to pay for my advice online or offline. Although I've said in my um, in my DTube in my DTube entry that well. If they want to, if they want to draw me from my content creation, they have to pay. They have to. They, they really have to pay me. Okay. They can't afford me when it comes to that. But sometimes, okay, sometimes you have to forego whatever monetary gain you you plan to you plan to have in order to get the better things in life. In order to. Uh, in order to gain the more long-term things of life like trust friendship and validation for what you do okay now for this pro for this uh, I don't want to I don't want to use the word prospect as much as possible sorry potential client well I'm more than willing to offer her my advice for free okay in the hopes that I would get a um, that I would uh, get a testimonial from her if and only if that advice of mine worked for her okay <clears throat> again well I haven't uh, I haven't uh, mentioned this but not all advice is guaranteed okay? results may vary okay? I only give advice it's up to you to implement that it's um it's up to you if you're going to take my word for it but in this case i'm willing to offer advice for free to that potential client in uh, in the hopes that i can get her success as a testimonial okay. it's a fair deal it's a potential fair deal so moral lesson here is when you're well in these trying times, okay, in these um, confusing times. Sometimes you have to offer your services for free to some people, to the extreme cases, um, as I as I would describe them, the extreme cases. After all, well. Testimonials, trust, and friendship are more long-term results. No money in the world can 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 match any of those three combined. Okay. Walang pera ang makakapantay sa tatlong yan. Testimonials, trust, and friendship. I just came across well actually um, uh, yesterday on my YouTube notifications that Valuetainment just interviewed Valuetainment um, Patrick with David's uh, YouTube channel they interviewed an economist where the economist slammed <clears throat> where this economist slammed um, the Fed stimulus packages well those are you US related stuff so none of my business but he also slammed Bitcoin. All right. This, this is what stimulated me to make this entry. All right. <clears throat> now, when it comes to um, when it comes to economists, okay, they are the last you should get money advice from. Personally, I do not give a shit about what they say. Any economist of any caliber. Nope. Sorry. Your opinion doesn't count to me. I would rather get 
an opinion from my dog than an economist. Okay? Mas kukunin ko pa, mas ivavalue ko pa ang opinion ng aso ko pagdating sa pera. When, uh, rather than an economist. You guys wanna, wanna know why? Well, simple. <clears throat> Economists are the ones who are holding to old ideas. They are experts at this. Okay? They are experts at this. Most of them. Alright? Hindi ko nilalakatan. Okay? Let, let's be clear on that. Most economists are the ones holding on to old money ideas. Ideas that have been that have been uh, classified as old since uh, World War II or even when or even during the fall of communism. So, why take an economist's word for it? For me, I don't trust their opinion. I don't trust their opinion. Like I said, like I said a while ago, I would rather trust a dog's opinion than an economist's. <clears throat> I would rather, well, well, uh, to be frank with you, I would rather trust the opinion of um, <clears throat> a Bitcoin investor. Okay, when it comes to Bitcoin, okay. I would rather trust a, a, the opinion of a Bitcoin investor or a disgruntled Bitcoin investor. I say they, I say they, their foot was, their foot is on the, their foot is already, either already on the door, or they've stepped their foot off the door. Talagang <clears throat> nag-experience na sila when it comes to this kind of investment. Or um, what I want to, what I want to, yeah. For example, when I want to invest in mutual funds, I would rather seek the opinion of a professional mutual fund investor or someone who has invested in mutual funds but pulled out. Yun, mas paniniwalaan ko yun. Kesa naman sa mga economists, well, kesa naman sa mga economists, they're only, they're only uh, expressing their opinions from, from looking, on the, looking from the outside. Rarely do they step their foot in. So why take their word for it? Hmm? Why take their word for it? Again? Well, not exactly again. Here's a closer. Never trust an economist's opinion. I just, um... Pondered on something that came from <clears throat> all the uh, all the videos, all the uh, blog posts that I have read until this morning, okay, to be specific. And well, thought about thought about life. Okay, how to compute life. Okay. I went back to those I went back to the days when I would think of uh, so many solutions to one problem I was um, this was 20 years ago okay this was 20 years ago I would think of solutions to different solutions to one problem and well I'm 47 now and I've come to learn this <clears throat> it takes just two to compute life, right? It only, you don't actually have to complicate yourself with several solutions to just one problem. All you need are two, right? Well, a computer only needs two numbers to, to do its dirty work, one and zero. In, in seeing issues, you only need two colors, black and white. And, well, in the justice system, 
there are all there are, there are two factions good and evil you get what i'm saying the universe is not that complicated that's why there are only two sides to every story okay there are only, actually there are only two sides to every story there are only two factions to every conflict there are and in well in life you only need two choices okay it's either one or the other <clears throat> it's either one or the other <clears throat> but if you um if you if you have that tendency like i was two decades ago na mag-iisip ng napakaraming solusyon sa isang problema and hindi hindi ma hindi magkadamayo kung anong uunahin <laughs> Well, if you're faced with such a with with a dilemma with a dilemma like that very often, run it down to just two. Run it down to just two, then make your decision. That's how life should be treated, in twos. All right. <clears throat> That's why I'm. It's so, so one of the reasons why I'm taking it easy at 47. Okay, I am not rushing things. If there are so many solutions to a problem, I only take the top two. Right? I only take the two strongest. The rest don't matter. The rest don't matter. Why should I? Why should we complicate ourselves with so many solutions to just one problem when we only need to? Make either of two choices. Oh, by the way, in making a choice, there are only two answers. Yes and no. You see? Life isn't that complicated. It only just, it only runs down to two. So I repeat, it takes two to compute life. I just came across uh, Jay Dharmawangsa's video talking about uh, talking about the different shows, the online shows he, she was she was watching. These are these are online reality shows. Okay, you wouldn't see them in on mainstream or even cable TV, right? They're exclusively online. Um, she talked about the normalizing effect, okay, and how these shows are trying to. Um, and how what media is trying to present these uh, the themes of these shows as the normal as the uh, as the, it's their concept of the new normal well there's a, uh, a problem with this okay the normalizing effect whatever whatever um, big companies media even governments tell you that this is normal well sad to say most of us believe it but no you have to sanitize it okay take it upon yourself to sanitize the normalizing effect now i'm going to tell you how i sanitize the normalizing effect there's only one rule for me if it's bullshit don't watch it right that's my rule that's my no, that's my one and only rule for sanitizing the normalizing effect again if it's bullshit don't watch it because well let's take reality shows reality shows these days okay i'm not saying all of them but most of them right but most of them are are well can only cater to the brain dead right dumbfounded concepts um, no educational value it's pure entertainment okay i don't even i i won't even call um a button asking you when was the last time you had sex to be educational all right I don't call I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't call that entertainment. So that's how I sanitize the normalizing effect. Okay. 
If it's bullshit, don't watch it. I just came across this um, this long video by the, the hip hop preacher Eric Thomas, and it inspired me to do this post for DTube. <clears throat> well, he discussed what he calls load management. Okay, there are three parts of load man. There are three signs that you need load management. You you care too much. You think too much, and you um, you do too much. Okay. If you look at these three signs, these are the three signs of people pleasers. All right. <clears throat> so, bottom line is for me, Eric Thomas's load management uh, principle is for people pleasers, basically. All right. It's for people pleasers because well you care too much about if you're a people pleaser you care too much about um, other people's welfare you think too much about someone's opinions about any any uh, every other person's opinion and you well you work yourself too much just to seek anybody's approval Right? Basically, though, those are three signs that you need load management. Okay, you do not need to do all those three to become successful. Okay, Eric Thomas was right on that. That's why he calls it load management. Okay, it may be important to those people, but it's not important to you. So why, why take their importance first? Of course, you have to take your own, your your own priorities first. All right. Stress lang yun. <laughs> okay. So if you again, if you care too much, you think too much, or you do too much, more often than not, you are a people pleaser. Do not expect your own success to come if you are this. Because well, in my own uh, in my own opinion and experience people pleasers are losers right you don't take care of your, that's why there are terms uh, there there are terms now like self love self respect of course huh? the age old term self respect self care because well <clears throat> kung pagtutulan mo ng pansin ang mga taong well Ang mga taong hinihinga mo, hinihinga mo ng uh, what you call this? Ng approval nila when they're treating you like shit. It's not worth it. Okay? It's not worth it. That's why Eric Thomas calls that thing load management. Kasi napakabigat dalhin eh. Okay? It's a heavy burden to place upon your shoulders. You, you care too much, you think too much, and you do too much for the people that don't care about you. Please, don't kid yourself. Do not fucking kid yourself. Let those people go and go your merry way. I assure you, okay? I've experienced that before. It is a... Um, it is a certified out of body experience if you're able if you if you pull that off yung um, shoving those monkeys off your back it's an out of it's an absolute out of body experience para kang nakalaya para kang nakalaya sa kulungan so remember people pleasers are losers. It's a bit raining outside, and uh, a typhoon has just entered the Philippines, so we will experience it here. I said, 
<clears throat> it skims across the um, the practically the whole Luzon Island. Okay. Well, that's not the that's not, that's not what we're going to talk about right now. What we're going to talk about is well the first day of the modified ECQ. Okay. Malls have reopened, but I'm seeing a different kind of future for for malls because of all because of what's going on well right now malls are confined to um, allowing food outlet tenants to reopen on the condition that they're going to that they won't uh, allow dine-in so take out the delivery lang and pick up okay they pick may tinatawag din na pick up so you're going to break the long lines for takeout and of course pick up so phone in tapos kukunin mo lang doon and of course delivery okay thank god for food panda link in the description <laughs> so with the with food delivery apps like food panda grab food and uh, lala food so of course uh, some food outlets have their own delivery apps in-house um, of course groceries okay but not all malls have groceries all right not all malls <clears throat> and upper floors are upper floors are closed okay to limit the flow of human to, to limit the flow of human traffic so ground floor lang ang bukas you can you can uh, you can go to the upper floors it's closed <clears throat> the way i see it um given given six months after or well, two to three months after this is all over i'm seeing malls dying a slow death right i've made this I think I made this prediction before uh, in one of my videos, so you'll probably link in the card. If you're on YouTube, okay, link in the card. And, well, unless malls change their business, change their own business model, right? Unless most malls change their business model, they're going to experience a very slow death. Okay. Malls are um, multi-horizon places. Okay. You, they they rent out they rent out spots for food outlets, even for small businesses. You mga nasa nasa aisles or nasa corners, they rent that out. There are also events places. There are also practical. Essentially. Malls are for mass gatherings. Okay, if you want to meet your your inner circle of friends there, you want to meet your network marketing team there, it's okay. You don't have to go through special permits to do that. If you're a small time events organizer, you can also organize events there. No problem. So unless uh, malls tweak their business model a bit. Malls will die a slow death because well it's going to be hard for them being multi-dimensional uh, multi-dimensional businesses it's hard for it's, go, it's going to be hard for malls to become to, to still be multi-dimensional after two to three months they have to specialize they have to specialize and of course well after this pandemic is over, things will never be the same, especially for them. Okay. People probably people will not frequent malls that much anymore. Siyempre, tatakot pe. Tatakot. And they're now comfortable with life at home, working from home actually. Kasi, um, order na sila ng pagkain kung tinatamad silang magluto. 
or they can also shop for groceries online or tatawag lang people have become comfortable these days with those kinds of uh, with those kinds of modes of delivery so they don't have to go to malls anymore kasi they've been comfortable with that kind of lifestyle now the life at home lifestyle so to speak so yeah unless malls tweak their own business models in two to three months they will start uh, they'll start experiencing a slow death okay. you can see that well let's see in two to three months but I'm gonna make a bold prediction right now the death of malls is near <laughs>